I have today Joel Whaley, and he is an entrepreneur that has done many, many things. Joel, to start people off to get to know you, could you tell me a little bit about what your life journey has been like to get you to where you are today? Well, I'd been a salesman all my life. I did. I went into the Navy. I did two tours in Vietnam. When I got out of the Navy, I became a salesman. And so I did a couple of small jobs in between, but mostly a salesperson because I could make more money that way. I love talking to people. I still do. One of my favorite things to do is to sit down and talk to a person and just kind of let them talk to me about what they're doing, what their ideas are. It's one of my favorite things to do. And so that lends naturally into a sales presentation. And that's what I like to do. I like to look in a person's eyes. I like to have them look in mine and see that I am true and that I have information for them that will help them. I like solving problems and making enough money so that I'm able to continue doing that. It's all about delivering value and solving problems. You want to get to know people first. You definitely have that joy in your voice. As far as I've known you, that joy never goes away. The enthusiasm, the look into what other people are doing and know a little bit about what you're doing. People will raise their hand, say, yeah, I'm interested, Joel. Well, tell me a little bit more about this. And I, I guess that's how you open up the conversations. It's not difficult to get people to talk about their pain points and what's not working for them. But I like to affiliate market, and that allows me to talk to entrepreneurs about their products. And, and when I start talking to them about their products, asking just a couple of questions, they open up on what problems they're having with their products, which of course opens the sales conversation uh, from my end on that because I'm all about solving problems. Well, you can't really turn a dollar unless you help someone else turn that dollar. What got you into the military? What was your feel about getting involved? Oh, well, where did that come time. from? That was a dark, was a dark time, time in my life. My brother was killed in Vietnam. I was 16 when that happened. He was 21. And on his second tour, it affected me greatly. It affected the whole family. The family was completely blown apart. It just totally destroyed the family. Most of them are gone now. I'm 72. But still, my little sister and I, we still are not well from that. It completely destroyed the family. It sent everybody in a different direction. Lots of substance abuse with my sister and my dad. It was a tough time. Two years after that. I enlisted in the Navy when I was still in high school. They allowed us to do that, but I still had to graduate. Since I was sole surviving son, there was no way I could go to Vietnam, but I was trying to get there in the worst way. I, I actually served two tours in, in Vietnam. What I did was I joined the Navy. Through the Navy, I joined the submarine with being on special ops on the submarine. We went into some fairly dangerous waters in Vietnam. I didn't always know exactly where we we're going to be. And in order for me to be on the submarine, I had to become a cook. And if you never anything in my life, when I became a cook, it was an amazing journey. They also found out I was colorblind and you can't be on the submarine if you're colorblind. They said that you wouldn't be able to qualify. Well, I qualified. Every valve was color-coded, but it also had a big, long number on it. So what I did was memorize the numbers. Okay. And I could tell oh. them what the valves were, and that's how I qualified. So you got around it. Very interesting. Uh, a little bit of memory work, but that just shows that you made a serious effort, that it was really important to you. Well, wow. it's really important to me. That's also led me to actually being in Vietnam on special ops because I could see through camouflage from aerial photos, black and white photos. And so I did a couple of special ops into uh, Vietnam where I looked at photographs and stuff and told them what I could see. So some things that may seem to be a hindrance turn out to have a way to really put it to work. Exactly. That's amazing, Joe. That's amazing. That's, Joel, that is something <laughs> else when I think about how you can turn uh, lemon into lemonade. You know, that's, that's the old story there. 
So you've been able to solve problems just innately. Uh-huh. And you also learned to man up. And that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Right after you got out, what did you do next? Went to college on the GI Bill. I mean, I did all, all the college, all four years. Didn't get a good degree, except for, I didn't get a degree. I kept switching majors because I couldn't find what I wanted to do. So I could never finish. And that's partially, that was like my PTSD, okay, coming from the, the war. That was the hard part for me. And things that I did were, when I got home, there was no danger. You know, I didn't feel like there was any danger, no excitement or anything. So I drove my truck at 100 miles an hour and did all kinds of crazy things. All the, yeah, that's how you cut loose from something that was... uh. Yeah. High octane living, you know, when you're dealing with danger all the time and not knowing what's going to happen next. Driving a truck a hundred miles an hour when you're young like that. But wow, then I met my wife. That's it. My future wife in college. Forward. And that, of course, everything depressurized at that point. And focused that's on good. a relationship between myself and her. We got that's married shortly really after I was out of college. Probably what you needed. There's something about jumping around in college because there's so many famous entrepreneurs that don't finish college because it's actually holding them back. And when you got into sales, that's that entrepreneurial spirit within because no one's actually going to pay you what you're worth if you go out there and get involved and do something for yourself. Yes, there's risk, but you know what that's about. Three years after I had left college, my wife and I had been married and we moved away. In the mail, I received a package. It was a graduation certificate for Associates of Arts. So I do have a degree. No, that's a good one. It's two years and that's just a, a good continuation. And th- that's yep. what, around 72 maybe or 70, 70? You mean the year? Or 70, 75? Yeah, so I was, was trying to picture that time because it was probably Nixon was around back then. Probably about 76. That time. In 76? When I was yeah, that. I think, it was more surprised to me. The letter said, I had so many credits in so many different areas, they just decided to give me a general education associate of arts degree. Well, it shows that you're willing to learn a lot about a lot of things. I think when it comes to sales, it's all about people and what you learn from people. You figure out ways to help them. That takes yep. a little bit of ingenuity because the thing they think they need might not be the thing they actually need. The thing they want doesn't turn out to be the thing they need. I always wanted the freedom. Freedom of sales creates freedom. Right? I, I set my hours. I set my time. I, I probably worked harder to win samples than I would have doing a regular job, but I, it was my choice. So I can remember many times when I was selling insurance to ranchers, I would show up at their ranch and I helped them do ranch work, have dinner with them at the table. And then afterwards, we'd talk about their insurance program. So it works out. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? People need to know and trust you and they see character. You're not afraid of hard work. Yep. I bet the military had a lot to do with that. What you have now, you and your sister, is you can remember the good times exactly. with your brother. But you just remember the good times and talk about that and have a good laugh and try to hold the rest together best you right. can. Because it'll never leave you. That's so true. My family, too. Now, my family, I have three children, two boys oh. and a girl. They're all, well, two of them are in their 40s and one's in their late 30s on that. Uh, so they're growing and have their families. It's just an interesting life now. And they followed any of your footsteps, any of the kids, or do they learn from you? Please. Every one of them have a job, like my daughter's a nurse. My youngest son is a supervisor in the oil fields. And my oldest son... He does construction jobs for the movie, the setups, the prompts, commercials. He does stuff for commercials and things like that. Building. Well, he's got a little bit of a creative bent there. He does. He's very creative. And that's problem solving because the material you get and what they want, you sometimes exactly. kind of make it work. And, oh, we're gonna say, it's, 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 it's not bad from you. That's good. Picture on the uh, back wall? Yeah. The the, uh, that's uh, me uh, and my cousin. When we were oh, your five. cousin. Oh, wow. We were at my grandfather's house 
on a lake and we, my mom sat us down there, noticed the hat. I always wear a hat. I don't have it on that's, inside, but my mom always has a hat. I have suspenders and a, a coverall just like that. When I was about five years old, I'm sitting on steps just like you are. We have something in common there. I have yep. it back in my office. i uh, maybe show it to you sometime, but it's, yeah, I was a little pudgy, but not too pudgy. <laughs> I've always been overweight my whole life. But as soon as I got well, That's, I the weight back. I remember first year of football in 10th grade that I had a stomach hernia and it hurt like hell. They make us do these bear crawls for a hundred yards. <laughs> the one time I had to do it was a really bad day for me. It was late into the training. It was hell week. So you're having two workouts in the same day every day. <laughs> and I'm bear crawling. That's on all fours. You can't drop your knees and you got to go to 110 yards. I was the last person struggling for that last five yards. Everyone was lined up against the fence watching me. It's kind of embarrassing, but the team came together and how they uh, applauded and what they gave you back yeah. was, was huge. Yeah, so it came through. Did you make some good friends in the Navy? Lifelong. I have a lifelong friend who uh, lives in Oregon. Uh, I live in Arizona. We stay in touch. Probably should spend Facebook's been out every day. We're always constantly texting back and forth and sending things to each other, usually about submarines. And we're constantly doing that. Friends and family, that's precious. We know that. Yep. That's great to keep a few from childhood yep. or from the Navy or wherever. Now, you've done a variety of affiliate programs over the years. Some probably are better than others. And Depends on what else you got going on, how much effort you put into something like that. When you run into someone who's got a problem, you've got a whole repertoire of tools and there's something in the toolbox that's going to fit. That's a clever way of doing business, Joel. Could you exactly. tell me a little bit about what you've been up to, maybe the last couple of things that you're working on now that are keeping you busy? But, uh, we're excited about a new program we have been working on for about two years. Helping businesses build lists. If they use our platform, every month they get a certain number of email addresses, phone numbers, and business data on businesses. And that allows them then to contact those businesses. Now, of course, you have to follow the rules and, and do everything legal. But it is a verified list when you get it. But that's uh, a business to business. Significant amount of emails. Are these business to consumer or business to business? Mostly business to business. Yeah, well, that's a little bit freer to contact people. Right. You certainly well, you, want to do it. Well, you right send them an email and ask them to opt in. You only work with the ones that actually opt in. If you have a list of 500,000 and you're putting it out there, you're going to get Quite a few that opt in if they're interested for things for their business. And of course, we teach how to do that. Um, our email lists go from 5,000 a month to up to 500,000 a month. You could build a list of millions of emails in just a very short time. Wow. That's something that people always need is leads. Uh, I've come across some things myself that were... You, you you have the leads is really important because you want to put something in front of them that uh, might be a benefit to them. You don't know where they're not, but you're just looking for a show of hands. You know, who's going to raise their hand and say, yeah, I'd like to know more. There's the lead magnet stuff that you can do, but it starts with trying to find a lead that's qualified to some degree. You just don't know how much until you get them to raise their hand a little bit, and then you can start working with them. Exactly. As you yep. do this, yeah. as you work through all these things for the internet, you always come back to the secrets in the list, right? Yep. And that is with anyone, even the ones that have these huge followings, the secrets in their list, that's how they make their money. So for somebody just starting out, the faster you can build your list, it's the better. Some people turn their list into newsletters. Some people are selling a widget. Some people are, you know, whatever it is, every business needs an email list. We can aim at adding businesses to solve certain problems. What kind of cost is involved for uh, an entrepreneur to come along and get started with something like that? Maybe start small and then build out as they're successful with it. Well, if you're just getting started, we recommend you start with the 5,000 list and that costs $25 uh -huh. a month. We want to help you get going. And keep in mind, you get the cell phone numbers with these too. So if you want to contact them, 
feel free, call. You'll more than likely get to talk to somebody, maybe not a receptionist. How does it work? How's it work to keep them fresh? Because, you know, people move a lot and all of that. Well, the the nice thing phone about, numbers, people keep their phone numbers, though. They keep the phone numbers. You know, you, that is the nice thing about this type of list. When was the last time you changed your cell phone number? Not very, not very often. I have had to change mine a couple of times due to something happening with the phone company, not with me. But I always try to keep my same phone number because you want your family and friends to stay in touch. That's how they do it. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you don't want to change those unless you have to. Well, that's what we found with the list. So we can actually text companies. So we contact them first, asking them to opt in. Then we can text or email them as long as they allow us. That's, you know, how you play the game. That's the rules. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I certainly want to talk to you later about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so that's on your plate now. Uh, do you have a like something that uh, you feel would really help people at this time that you've got out there that you're working on now that maybe uh, uh, that you have a, some type of an offer you'd like to put out there? Well, we're really excited about our last offer that we have, which is um, it, which is gold and silver. I mean, who doesn't like gold and silver? Okay. <laughs> Um, when I have it in my hand. And that's the whole idea is, can you get something with with uh, gold and silver to prepare for anything that's going to happen? I mean, obviously, everything that goes up must come down someday. So we recommend that you have a, a supply of precious metals. Those you can use in an emergency if you have to. That they may save what you're trying to save, or they may help you get through the bad times. Well, that, and it's simple to just start buying it. Most people don't know how to buy. So that's why the membership with the company. And then they will teach you how to buy. And there's like two ways. You can buy where you actually get the metal and you keep it. Or you can buy it in increments as low as a dollar and have it in a vault. And just ask for it when you want it. And that it will it's actually not. be turned back into fiat money and, and directly put into your account. Well, that's fiat money. I don't know. It might be better to go uh, cyber these days. That you know, put a little. Well, you never know what's going to happen. That's why I always you like to have a little you gold and know. silver. Wasn't there a king or something that, uh, or maybe it was Egypt? I can't remember what the deal was. Where uh, there was a famine, and uh, he had saved up for seven years. I think there's a, a biblical story behind this. And it turned out that people didn't have food, and food was more valuable than their gold and jewels and everything. They were trading in their gold and jewels for the food because he was yep. smart that enough be to, Joseph. To, to, look <laughs> at, to look far enough ahead that uh, exactly. can't survive without it. So, But they were wow. lucky to have the jewels and things yeah. to trade in for the food because what happened to the ones that didn't have that? True. That's the scary part. So... It's just a, a great of, conversation. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's, it's just a way of ensuring that you'll have something to like dicker with if you need yeah. to. Yeah. And you may, we may actually. Yeah. It's I mean, these are precarious. Carry. It's very easy to carry. I mean, it is. Yeah. And it's, and if you're carrying gold coins, they're worth a lot. We're currently, what, $2,600 an ounce? Yeah. You know, if you were carrying five of those, you'd be carrying a lot of money. A lot too. So easy to carry, easy to get rid of, easy to uh, change in back into whatever denomination you're at. I mean, you might not be in this country when you need to use them, but all countries will accept gold. Well, people need friends and they need uh, the silver and gold to get through a bad time. So we need our friends and we need our silver and gold because that's what leads to food. <laughs> yep, exactly. In one hour. Everyone loves to break bread together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a it's just communal thing. People get to know each other uh, over a meal. Uh, that's, right. that's so true. Yep. Cheers. We, we covered some ground today. I want to thank you for the time and getting to know what you're doing with gold and silver, and especially the email list. Uh, certainly, that seems like a not just a hot topic, but a, a, a super tool that people need to take the next step because to discover intent because uh you got to find where your demand is you send a hundred emails have no list, and, yeah you have no customers you have no okay. customers and yeah. without customers your business can't survive 
approach and you have to discover where the demand is. Right. Exactly. No demand. If there's no, you're trying, you can certainly find that out through emails without uh, exactly. spending up a fortune. Very quickly. Yeah. How many people build something and spend years building it and put thousands and thousands of dollars in anything, then they go to market with it and there's no market for it. Well, and you know that people always come up with inventions that they've done or, or that yeah. they and their hearts are in them. I mean, their, their heart and soul is in the invention, but maybe no one else wants it. It's like, yeah, it's and timing could be, could be, yeah, timing could be a lot to do with that. You know, exactly. these, these days people are smarter. They're trying to come up with a, uh, what do they call it? MVP, a uh, minim right. uh, minimal, uh, viable product kind of thing. Exactly. Trying to and, stay on uh, the cutting edge. It. That's another, another term. Yep. Oh, we got to do that these the days. Edge. Yep. Um, before we close here, AI is such an important thing these days as part of what's going on. Have you been playing with it? What, what have you discovered? Yeah, it writes all our emails. We actually write the emails that we're, yes. that we're going to send out, which is a huge burden off of us trying to figure out, and all businessmen should use it, trying to figure out how to write a, an email in um, for your product, okay, in a type of voice where people pick up on that, not too salesy, things like that. And AI will do that for you. Where before that, we stared at a blank page of the typewriter saying, how do I do this? Oh yeah, time is everything. Time is money. Yep. Nice thing about uh, sure. AI is you can say, write me an email uh, the way so-and-so -so would write. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the secret's in the prompting, for sure. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So that, that also comes with our system. So that you're able to do that. So not only will we help you with the list, we actually let you get you to write your emails. Yeah. Well, we'll get this uh, uh, talk, uh, our chat today, out in front of a few people. Include some links so they can look up if they're have an interest in investing in silver and gold and what you're doing with the coins there. And then importantly, moving their business forward with uh, the email marketing and probably a few other tricks you have uh, under your sleeve there. But I think people would have a lovely time talking with you just as I have. Thank you, Joel. This has been great. Thank you.